So far away, Lucas, what are we talking about today? We're talking about a game that sadly died on its ass. Not sadly, Lucas. I'm glad it's dead. <laughs> I'm so glad. So far away, Lucas, as you often do, we'd like to let the lovely audience at home know what the topic of today's Wiki Weekend Wednesdays, whenever these are going out now. Yeah, sure. We are going to be discussing, like, Anthem, the video game. Uh, the critical, commercial, and just general flop that was. And um, Lucas, before we get into that, you know, the actual wiki entry itself, um, thoughts on Anthem? Um, I was really hyped for Anthem because it was basically yeah. pitched as like a Destiny game where you fly around like fucking Iron Man. Made by Bioware. It's like, oh, that sounds pretty good. And for context, mm -hmm. um, I own Anthem. I bought it. Here's, here's my copy of <laughs> Anthem that I'm holding up. This cost me £5, including delivery. And delivery costs more than the game. So I think for anyone who's not familiar, that sums up how hard this game died. Especially when it's made by EA. And the EA yeah. game going down that fuck that's ridiculous. Of course. <laughs> but, and I remember you playing that game after you bought it for a few quid and just wait, it wasn't even worth it. It wasn't worth it. It's a long I spent longer downloading all the updates and installing it than I did playing it. <laughs> because the moment I got into a firefight and just saw those pips appear above the person's head and went, so every firefight is going to be 20 minutes of shooting at an enemy that doesn't react. Oh, I, I already tried playing with Division and didn't like it. I don't fancy playing this, but <laughs> without further ado, Anthem video game. Anthem is an online multiplayer action role-playing video game. Fucking hell. Yeah. Genres and a half there. Developed by Bioware and published by Boo, uh, <laughs> aka Electronic Arts. The game was released worldwide for Microsoft Windows, PS4, and Xbox One on February 22nd, 2019. So the game, I think as of a couple of weeks ago, our time as recording, is officially dead, yes? EA is not. Uh, yeah, so I believe it was as of roughly like February, mid-February 2021. Two years so, later, they announced like, yeah, the, we're not supporting the game anymore. Like, It's still going to be live, but it's not going to be worked on. Yeah, and this was pitched like one of those Destiny killers, wasn't it? And how mm. long has Destiny been supported for, Lucas? I believe we're on the seventh year of Destiny now, and we've got three more years at least of announced content. No, oh, yeah, so that's like a solid decade, and um, Anthem got two years. Keep in mind, are the Christmas decorations still up? Do we know that? I don't know. <laughs> Do you want to tell that story? Because that's amazing. That actually like, made me giggle so much when you told me. Yeah, it was, I believe, last year when someone just went... Oh, uh, so I logged on to Anthem to see how it's doing, and it's the middle of February and the Christmas lights are still up. <laughs> They've still got the Christmas fucking <laughs> shit up. Oh, man. Is there anything? Just more, It's like when you look at someone's house and they've still got the Christmas tree up in March, and you go, mate, <laughs> fuck, I know that you and your wife broke up, but you need to get your shit together. <laughs> so we have here just a, a brief um, uh, like summary of the game. Set on an unnamed planet, says it all. So they, they couldn't even be asked to write the lore of what the planet's called. Players assume the role of freelancers. So they couldn't even come up with a cool name for the guys <laughs> you play out. Lucas, what's the name of the people in Destiny? Guardians. And does that sound cool as fuck? It does, yeah. You're protecting yeah. Earth from like all of the threats of the universe. Like This plot summary sounds like the placeholder where you're supposed to like put in your own cool words. Yes. It's like, just call it like planet, I don't know, like Exxon. <laughs> and you're play and you're playing as just fucking mech warriors or some shit. So is this a game of like Mad Libs now? Basically, yeah, we could try that. So Joe, you know we can Mad Libs this intro. So set on an unnamed planet, players through the role of freelancers, heroic adventurers who wear powerful exosuits to demend humanity from the threats beyond their wall. So unnamed planet, Lucas, just name a planet from fiction. Okay. Like a cool uh, planet. Can you think of one? You know what? We'll defend Tatooine. And freelancers, that's boring. Think of like a job class from like an RPG. Hmm. Like Blue Mage, like Dark Knight, Samurai, any of those classics. Let's go with Samurais, yeah. Then we have powerful exo suits, which is boring as fuck. So can you think of a cool like suit from fiction? Put them in Jaegers. Okay, so here we have. Set on planet Tatooine, players assume the role of Samurais. Heroic adventurers who wear powerful Jaegers defend humanity. That, we've already made a better fucking game. <laughs> anyway, 
The game's title refers to the Anthem of Creation, a powerful and mysterious force responsible for creating most of the extraordinary technology phenomenon and threats of the world. Which isn't true, is it, Lucas? Um, is it not? I don't really no. know. Well, what was the game's original name? Oh, right. <laughs> you want to tell this story to the folks at home? Because this is amazing. Yeah, um, so the original name of the game was actually Beyond. And... <laughs> Which is so fucking generic. Yeah, this is super generic. So, like, Anthem is not a better or worse name, but they intended on being called Beyond to the point where days before the E3 announcement, they had T-shirts printed off for E3 staff with the word Beyond put on it. Mm -hmm. And then EA told them last minute, like, we couldn't secure the name rights for Beyond. Uh, go with one of your backup ones, fuck it. And I one day will own one of those t-shirts and wear it in a video. <laughs> Despite some positive sales achievements, the game failed to meet commercial expectations. Bioware announced in February 2020 that they would reinvent the core gameplay of Anthem as part of a long-term plan. As of February 2021, all future developments <laughs> ceased. <laughs> that, that says it all, doesn't it? Yep. Oh, oh fucking hell, Luke, we've got a couple of subheadings here. We have gameplay, synopsis, development, marketing and release, and of course, reception, which we're going to cover. So before that though, what would you rather do? Development, marketing, release, synopsis, or gameplay? You know, I think we just go to development, because I really do not care about the setting or the plot of this game. There isn't one. No. You're, there isn't one. Lucas, you're on Tatooine fighting Jaegers, let's go. <laughs> New game. So development of Anthem started in 2012 after the release of Mass Effect 3. So it took them eight years odd to make it, and it was canceled after two. Um, under the supervision of the executive producer of the original Mass Effect trilogy, Casey Hudson. So they, oh is this, I think I remember this, didn't they have like the most like talent, like the creme de la creme of talent working on it, and then everybody just fucking quit? Yeah, I think it uh, might mention it obviously later, but mm. I know Casey Hudson like left after like a couple of years of development, no, then got back. brought back to make sure that Anthem, like you know, got salvaged, Let's and then has out, already then. re left <laughs> again. So here we go. So it says here that internally the project was codenamed Dylan by Bioware in reference to Bob Dylan, in hopes that it will be a name that will be spoken about years later. Oh. <laughs> well, you got part of that right. <laughs> it's definitely been spoken about years later. Think about it. this channel's lasted longer than Anthem did. Oh, yes. And I made this in my bedroom. <laughs> While Bioware did not have any strong ideas at the start of Anthem's development cycle, I'm just going to let that sit. Uh, they knew they wanted to make an action game that players could play cooperatively, and which moved away from their Mass Effect and Dragon A franchises. How's that working out? But what are their two announced games right now, Carl? Yeah, an early idea that focused uh, the direction was the use of robotic enhanced exosuits akin to Iron Man to be able to survive on a planet that acted as a Bermuda Triangle that drew in all types of hazards and dangerous creatures, with players having to survive those. That game sounds awesome, they should have made that. They should have done. Well, they should have made that game. Players would have to team up with friends, go on to missions fighting their way to and from the site, collecting resources to upgrade their suits, all while behind the scenes, Bioware could pull various world events to trigger to keep players surprised and alert. They should have done that as well. That sounds fun. It does. It really does. Like, why didn't they do any of this cool shit? Oh, let me uh, guess, because EA stepped in and went, no. <laughs> I was about to say, yeah, probably. Around August 2014, Hudson believed the team at Bioware was in a sufficiently good place to continue without his oversight and left. <laughs> in early 2015, Dragon Age writer David Gader was assigned to the Anthem team to help with the story. Gader drew the story back towards something more in common with Mass Effect and Dragon Age. <laughs> Oh, these narrative shifts put further strain on the artists and level designers to match with the story's direction. Gator left Bioware in early 2016, and the story was brought back to what the, the team had originally envisioned. Oh my god! So, it's shifted tone twice already. Furthermore, the team continues to struggle with a frostbite engine as EA's management under Patrick Sunderland wanted all its studios to use the same technology. Yeah, because let's bear in mind that Bioware were used to um, the Unreal Engine. And EA just went, no, 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 use our engine. It's made for first-person shooters, but fuck it. Yeah, it's made for first-person shooters, but there you go. Then again, if you understand an engine, you can do good stuff with it. Like, my favourite example is the Fox engine, which was used to make both Metal Gear Solid Five and, like, Pro Evolution Soccer. But, as you said, Bioware were familiar with that engine, and were like, we don't want to do this, we don't want to use it. That's what ruined Mass Effect Andromeda, wasn't it? Uh, that, that's a big thing towards it, yeah. 
Because like we want to use the engine we've used our entire no, use ours because it saves us money, but the mm. game is shit now. <laughs> it saves money then it's a bad game. Well, speaking of that, Frostbite was not originally designed for the purposes that the team had in mind for Anthem. Bioware had difficulty transitioning some of the systems they had built for Dragon Age and Mass Effect into Anthem, leading to the team scrapping some of their gameplay concepts, like um, mincing and rafting, aka survival and crafting. <laughs> some of the, I, I don't even know where that joke came from. Is it just when we play Smash? I, I, I just, like, I don't know, like, people started to refer to Minecraft as mince raft and just... <laughs> Mincing and rafting. Oh man. Please, how fucking cool does it sound though? To like just travel the galaxy in a suit of armor that you have like in a pots and pans robot suit that you have to keep slapping new parts to. Yeah. Like, that's basically that game um, Cory Barlog came up with. You know, why is there not a Mandalorian video game where it is you've got to travel a galaxy and just keep upgrading your armor with Beskar? Four years into development, developers expressed concern that Anthem was nowhere close to the final production stages <laughs> and were facing similar issues with poor management of the project that had happened with Dragon Age, Inquisition and Mass Effect Andromeda as few concrete decisions would be made by the lead designers. Despite trying to distance themselves from Lucas's favourite game, Destiny... <laughs> Particularly related to the loot shooting aspects, they started to appear in Anthem's gameplay anyway, as Bioware recognised that Bungie had greatly refined these elements. And we all know what happened next. The game was released and it was an utter shit show. And people like me got swindled into paying two and a half pounds for it. So, reception! Anthem received, and I quote, mixed or average reviews. According to the review aggregator, Metacritic. Reviewer um, uh, Cali Plage from GameSpot said that Anthem has good ideas but it struggles significantly with the execution. IGN's James Duggan said Anthem has an energetic combat but it saves too much of what precious little content it has for the endgame, making playing through its mismatched story a tedious and repetitive grind. Uh, that's never a good thing, is it? No. <laughs> uh, that's a really bad... Uh, like, it's a loot shooter and you don't get any loot. Yeah. Like, just like, save like, it all for like that one end game mission they had got. Like everybody needs to just do what Borderlands does and just throw fucking loot at you constantly. I don't care if it's bad as long as the numbers keep going up. Mm -hmm. That's like you know the core of that genre. Just keep throwing shit at people like every five minutes. Like, well, we know did you this. hear about the the time that happened in Anthem? Oh yeah, where well, they accidentally set the loot drop too high or something, didn't they? And everyone's like, "This is great. The game feels fun now because I feel like I'm being rewarded for playing the game." And they did, didn't they change it? Back? They patched it back out. It was a <laughs> bug, and the loot apparently like was double the amount it was meant to be. But every player was like, "This is great," and they still removed it. Sam Loveridge from Games Radar Plus was more critical of the game, saying that Anthem is ultimately severely flawed and very unfinished. There's half a good game in there but it doesn't do enough to diminish the overall feeling of emptiness and repetition. <laughs> Mike Williams from US Gamer called the game a frustrating, tedious experience, feeling that the game lacked purpose and ultimately doesn't feel like the best Bioware can do. PC Gamer said Anthem's disjointed story, boring loot and repetitive missions are all, and I quote, disappointing. In spite of mixed receptions, Anthem received praise for its combat and flight. GameSpot described the flight as freeing, serene, and exhilarating all at once. Really? I played it for, like, you know, a couple hours and was like, really? This is what people are, like, losing their shit over? Like, I did enjoy the flying. I wouldn't say it's, like, quite as incredible as that experience is, but, yeah, like, it was definitely the strongest part of the game. Keep in mind as well, Spider-Man PS4 came out around the same time as this game. Yeah, and like and Titanfall feels a lot better to play than this. Titanfall, does. oh my god, Titanfall movement was so fucking good. Here's a clip yeah. of me playing Titanfall and doing some good movement. Or trying to. Uh, wait there, Luke, because I've got um, two batteries I can bring. Actually, yeah, I've got two. You can stay where you are. You're going to be good. Trying. Be good. Several critics noted long loading screens that could take up to five minutes or longer and could oh. surpass the time necessary to complete an average in game mission. Yeah, I remember that, because you get a loading screen for everything you do, including customising your robot. Yeah. Because you go into like a little hub world, it's like, okay, I want to customise my robot, here's a five minute loading screen. And, and the worst that. part was, like, I'm used to long loading screens on Destiny, but guess what? You can click your menu and start going through your loot while it loads. You couldn't in Anthem! Yeah, it's like, that's the problem with fucking EA games. Like, I will never play a Battlefield game because I can't customise my loadout between matches. 
Mm. Because they've never bothered to put that in. It's like Call of Duty have done this is the first fucking one. Let me do it. Like, yeah. fuck you. <laughs> and now Luke is moving on to awards. And boy, are these going to be embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> so in 2018, before the game was released, uh, it was nominated for, at the Games Critics Awards, Best of Show, Best Original Game, Best PC Game, Best Action Game, and Best Online Multiplayer. Keep in mind, the game wasn't out yet. And it was being nominated for Best Online Multiplayer Game. It won Best PC Game and Best Action Game. Also in 2018, um, it was nominated for the Most Wanted Game by the Golden Joystick Awards and the Most Anticipated Game by the Gamers' Choice Awards. Um, then you fast forward two years. So the game was out for two years. It was nominated for no more awards during that time. With the exception of, in 2020, the Visual Effects Society, Outstanding Visual Effects in a Commercial. <laughs> So it's commercial, got nominated, it did not win. And I think so the that, only award it got nominated for after release was a visual effects for the commercial. For the for the advert they released, yeah. And I think oh. that sums it up. Most anticipated game, best original game, most wanted game, two years after it's released, no one gives a fuck. <laughs> that sums up just the slow, painful, earned death of Anthem. Fuck that game. I want my two and a half pounds back. It was oh not God. worth it. Do you know what I'll do? I'll do, I'll do. Right? If anyone out there has an Xbox One and you live in the UK, fuck it. I will send you this game. <laughs> I will send you this game. I'll tell you what, right? I just want someone to just draw the cover of Anthem as oh. badly as they can. Send it to me on Twitter. And like the day this vi- when this, ever this video goes out, I'll send someone this copy as long as you live in the UK. You can have my copy of Anthem, and I'll sign it as well, and I'll be a dick, and I'll sign it on the part of the disc, so you can't play it. Because <laughs> you don't want... <laughs> there we go, let's do that. So draw the cover of Anthem as badly as you can, and send it to me on Twitter. On the day this video goes out, I'll send you a copy of Anthem, if it's a good one. <laughs> I don't want it anymore, fuck it. <laughs> 